How do I respond when they say they only use casting sites? You're a voice actor. You're an entrepreneur. You're a VOpreneur. Welcome to the Everyday VOpreneur Podcast, your guide through the business of voiceover. Your voiceover demos are your number one marketing tool, and you need to display them on your website in a way that works on any device or browser. VoiceSam is the player producers love. Plus, it offers tools that can improve your email signature, quickly create a one-page website, and much more. Sign up now at VoiceSam.com slash Mark Scott and get three months of the bass player for the price of one. That's VoiceSam.com slash Mark Scott for full details and to sign up. The VOpreneur Podcast. Hey, it doesn't suck. Not as funny as Conan. Not as cute as Seth Meyers. Not as smart as Colbert. But he's one of us, and that counts for something. Here's Mark Scott, the original Everyday VOpreneur. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Everyday VOpreneur podcast, your guide through the business of voiceover. I'm Mark Scott, the original Everyday VOpreneur, ready to drop some more actionable, practical advice on you, things that you can really do something with for your voiceover business, things that can help you grow and help you move to the next level. That is what it is all about. Thank you so much for listening, for subscribing, wherever fine podcasts are given away for free. And most importantly, thank you for your reviews. I really do appreciate the reviews. It makes me feel good to be able to read those and know that you guys are enjoying the podcast, and that helps to motivate me to keep putting great content out. But it also helps other people to find the podcast, which helps benefit their careers as well. So thank you for leaving your reviews on Apple Podcasts. So this week I want to talk about casting sites. And and I want to answer a question that I get asked all the time with regards to online casting. And I know some of you are thinking this is going to be a good episode because you guys all think that I'm like totally anti-casting site. And that is absolutely not the case. This is not going to be specifically about casting sites, but rather about one particular issue related to casting sites. And that is, what do I do when I'm direct marketing And the lead that I have reached out to responds that they only use casting sites. It's like the ultimate conundrum because your your whole entire purpose of doing direct marketing is because you're trying to get yourself off of the casting sites. Maybe you're trying to free yourself from total and utter reliance on the casting sites. But then as you're reaching out to people, you're doing your own marketing, you're contacting your new leads. It's like they're driving you back to the casting sites anyway. So what do we do In those moments when a new lead says that we only do our casting via casting sites. I actually think that there are a couple of things to take into consideration here. I think that there are a couple of ways that you can respond to it. First and foremost, it is worth noting that most of the major casting sites allow you to have a free profile. And I do think that it's absolutely worth it to have that free profile. At the end of the day, what is the internet? The internet is just one giant search engine, right? When we think search engine, we think Google, but everything is a search engine. A big part of what drives voice one, two, three is the algorithms that drive their search. So the internet is one giant search engine that you want to be able to be found in. So I think setting up free profiles on every casting site that will let you, I think there's an advantage to that for you. It's more places to get your name out there. It's more places to share your demo. It's more places that you can ultimately be found in search, which, of course, is only good and only benefits your SEO. So I do think you need to get those free profiles up there. The number one reason, like I said, one more place to have your demo. But the number two reason why it is worth it to have those profiles there is in this particular instance. You reach out to a production company via direct marketing found their website, you sent them an email, you had a back and forth conversation with somebody, they like your stuff, but they only use casting sites. And maybe they only use a particular casting site in order to source talent for their projects. So what do you do next? Well, you let them know that you would be happy to audition for any project that they post that fits your profile and suggest to them that they can send you direct invitations. I have received direct invitations through Voice123, though I haven't been a paid member in years. I have received direct invitations through Bedalgo, though I haven't been a paid member in, in a couple of years. And just so nobody reads into anything, I don't have anything against these casting sites. I just, quite frankly, don't have time to audition for them. And so it wasn't really worth it for me 
because I couldn't take advantage of them in the right way. So often I get misconstrued as, as this guy that is completely anti-casting site, and I am not anti-casting site. I think that casting sites can and should be a tool in your toolbox, just not the only tool in your toolbox. So anyway, I digress. We want to have those free profiles so that when you do have that instance that somebody says we only use the site, you can let them know that they can invite you. You can suggest that they add your profile to their favorites list and then a direct invitation means that you are going to be able to reply to their casting promptly. And I do think that this is something important to note. You probably heard me talk about features and benefits in the past, and this is something that I dive heavily into in the voiceover marketing playbook. I want you to remember when you're writing your reply to these people that you need to write it as a benefit statement that is something that is a benefit to them. So when it comes to the direct invitation, remember that it's not about you getting an opportunity. It's about them being able to easily receive a prompt audition. You're saying the exact same thing. Invite me so I can audition to your project. But you're just saying it in a slightly different way, and you're offering a benefit to them. If they know that they're going to have the opportunity to get an audition from you quickly, then they're much more likely to take advantage of something like the direct invitation systems that some of those casting sites offer. So that's the first scenario. The first scenario is you've written to somebody, they've told you that they only use casting sites, you let them know that you're not active on that site, but you do have a profile that They can invite you to a project anytime and that you'll happily submit to them. And if you haven't got your free profile set up yet, I would suggest that you go through and set up free profiles on any of the sites that are going to allow you to do it. And best case scenario, they say, okay, perfect, fantastic. They invite you to projects going forward because they did like your voice and now you're moving on your way. You got to remember, we are all thinking about this from a voiceover standpoint, from a talent standpoint, right? We just want to find clients and work directly with clients. But you have to think about the client standpoint. I'm a production house and I got two choices. I can maintain a roster of talent, try to figure out who sounds like what, try to sort and organize a database somehow so that when a client comes to me and they need a video done and they ask for a very specific voice, I can try to remember who's in my roster and and I can, you know, find those group, that group of people, send them an invite, collect auditions. And that can be a lot of work for people. Whereas I could instead just go to Bidalgo, Voice123, VO Planet, wherever, post a job in two minutes, get a whole bunch of auditions, done, easy. My clients can sort through them, easy. So remember that. Remember that casting sites, regardless of how you may or may not feel about them, and regardless of how you may or may not feel about specific ones, you got to remember that this is from the client perspective and for them, they're just trying to make their life as easy as possible. And I do think that's something that's really important worth noting. Now, another angle that you can take, and, and this could be included in the same email and in the same response, let them know that you don't use casting sites. However, at the same time, let them know that if they ever need a voiceover that they think you might be a fit for, or perhaps they don't find what they're looking for on a casting site, Let them know that you'd be happy to audition for them anytime and that they can reach out to you directly. Another angle that I have taken in the past is letting them know, hey, I understand casting sites absolutely provide ease of use and and I get that. I understand why you would use it. But if you're ever in a situation where you just need to get things done quickly, maybe you don't have time to submit a a casting and and get 200 auditions collected and whatever, but you just need something that it's got to get done this afternoon. Reach out. I'm here. I'm happy to help. So find a way to speak to the ease of using you. Direct communication, no middlemen, quick turnaround, not having to spend time listening to a thousand auditions, whatever the case may be. So I think that that is absolutely another approach that you can take. Then the one other thing that I'm going to address here, as much as I don't want to, there is one particular casting site that shall remain nameless outside of saying VDC that a lot of voice actors don't have a lot of respect for because of the way that they do business, because of some of their chosen business practices, some of the unethical things that they do, the way that they double and triple dip on on talent for commissions and fees and, and all of that sort of stuff. And so what do I do when somebody says that I use that particular site? Of course, our instinct is to tell them that that is, you know, the evil empire, 
and and that that is the site that is going to bring about the industry apocalypse and there's absolutely no reason why you should ever even think about using this company because of their loathsome policies and and their the way that they treat talent and blah 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 because we're we're angry unfortunately the only people that know about most of this stuff are voice actors voice seekers voice buyers they don't have a clue what is going on at VDC they don't want to have a clue about what's going on at VDC because why are they using it in the first place they just want to get a voice for their project. So rather than going off into a, a giant rant telling them how evil this place is, I will say, unfortunately, due to some questionable business practices that didn't always align with the best interests of my client and my business, I no longer associate myself with that site. However, if there's ever an opportunity where I could assist you directly, please don't hesitate to reach out. And I leave it at that. I have had instances in the past where people have asked me for more information on that. And I've had an opportunity to you know, diplomatically address some of the concerns. Uh, I've had other times where they just did not respond and that's perfectly fine too, but I get to make my point. And so I think that professionalism is key in all of this because as I said, the clients don't have a clue what is going on. They just need a voice. That's it. They just need a voice. Now, I will say, though, that in the last couple of years as I've been doing my marketing, I've been finding less and less people that are using that particular site, which is always encouraging. Most of the time, from my own experience, when I'm doing my direct marketing and a lead that I reach out to tells me that they're using a casting site, it has been Voice123. That's not so bad because Voice123 lets me have my free profile and it gives them the ability to do the direct invitation. So I still don't fully feel like I'm missing out on anything. At the end of the day, marketing is a numbers game, right? You're, you're going to reach out to tons and tons and tons of people. And as you do that, you're going to see a broader array of responses. It is inevitable at some point that you are going to get a response from somebody who is using a casting site. And that is not the end of the world. We know that those sites are out there. We know that people are using them and there's nothing wrong with that. And a lot of us are using those sites ourselves. If you're one of them, then you really shouldn't be freaking out about it. It doesn't mean that it's a bad lead. It doesn't mean that it's a dead lead. It just means that they're doing things in a slightly different way and, and that is perfectly okay. So don't panic. Find a way that you can respond to them that makes you look professional, that speaks to the ease of working with you, but don't give them a hard time about using a casting site. Don't rip on the casting site if it's a casting site that you feel is worth ripping on. That just makes you look bad. And you certainly, certainly do not want to do that. I know that you guys would love for me to tell you about my thoughts on all the different casting sites. And maybe some of you thought that that was what you were going to get in this episode. But that is not what is going to happen. I just wanted to give you a really easy strategy and a couple of things to consider when it comes to responding to those direct marketing requests where somebody's using a casting site. Now, of course, I'm just excited that you're doing direct marketing in the first place that you could even get that response. And if you're not doing direct marketing for one reason or another, I can help you with that too. VoiceOver Marketing Playbook is coming out here in a couple of weeks, April 6th through the 15th. I'd love to have you sign up. I'd love to have the opportunity to teach you how to get out there and find your own leads, build your own client base, and become the consistently working voice actor that you want to be. Details on that at voiceovermarketingplaybook.com. Thanks so much for checking out another episode of the podcast. Remember, subscribe wherever fine podcasts are given away for free. Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, Stitcher, Podbean, Amazon Music. It's everywhere. It's also online at vopreneur.com. Thanks so much for listening. Catch you on the next one. The Everyday Vopreneur Podcast. Available everywhere fine podcasts are given away for free. Mostly, we think. Your voiceover demos are your number one marketing tool, and you need to display them on your website in a way that works on any device or browser. VoiceSam is the player producers love. Plus, it offers tools that can improve your email signature, quickly create a one-page website, and much more. Sign up now at voicesam.com slash markscott and get three months of the bass player for the price of one. That's voicesam.com slash markscott for full details and to sign up. And see. And that's a wrap. Thanks for hanging in. Thanks for hanging out. Want more VOPreneur goodness? Jump online at vopreneur.com.